and just make a real honest raw rock and roll record the expectations are going to be really high there is an end to the road coming it really makes you realize how precious time is there's been so many money battles and breakups and bad blood i unapologetically love chinese democracy two guitars bass and drums axel i'm telling you anything axel does is amazing and he could do no wrong don't Damage your legacy. I am dying to hear new Guns N' Roses material podcast here to talk about. Oh shit, look at that. Why I, I like to think it's just the magic in me. Look, I came here to do two things chew bubble gum and talk hair metal. And it looks like I'm almost out of bubble gum. Welcome to the hair metal guru. My name is Anthony. They call me the guru today. A a, a special episode. I didn't wear this Guns N' Roses shirt for nothing. Because I have my good friend Ian Scotto from the Battle Line podcast here to talk about. Oh shit! Look at that. Is that because I did thumbs up? Is that is that what did it? I don't know. I think it's. See, I've I use Zoom all the time, and I've never seen this happen. But I've watched on your channel. This yeah. has happened multiple times. And and usually when it happens, the only thing I know is this. I know <laughs> this is going to do some shit. Oh so wow! Sometimes I've never seen out. this. Sometimes it freaks me out when shit happens and I have You no have some type of setting on there. You do. No, I swear to God. I swear to God. So anyway, no, by accident, uh, maybe by accident. <laughs> yeah. Why well, I like to think it's just the magic in me, but uh <laughs> so anyway, Ian Scotto from the Battle Line podcast is here to talk about the the potential for a new Guns N' Roses album. Ian, welcome to the channel. Thanks for being here, man. Thank you, man. I I mean, I would say thank you for inviting me on, but I feel like I've kind of nudged you to, yeah. to come on because I am legitimately a fan of the channel and I discovered you from the Janie Lane video and I've been a fan ever since and I've I've wanted to do this. So I'm I'm psyched. And and so well, we hooked up because because you had reached out to me. You you do like a military focused uh, podcast, the Battle Line podcast with Chris Peranto. So you're big into the military, and and most of my followers know I'm I'm an Iraq and Kosovo vet, but you're also a huge hair metal fan. So you had me on to talk about hair metal and my military experiences, so which I really appreciated. But why don't you, you know, for people who follow me and are interested in in the military stuff, tell them about your podcast. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'll I'll keep it kind of quick, but I'm personally not a military veteran. But, but what happened was years ago, I met Brandon Webb, who is a Navy SEAL, and he kind of brought me into that whole world from my radio background, working at Sirius XM, uh, doing Soft Rep Radio, which was a podcast that I was a part of at that time. And that led to, after I left that, uh, doing this podcast with Chris Peranto, who I've known since he put out the 13 Hours book with the other guys who were stationed at Benghazi. And yeah, we've been doing it since 2019. We we talked to a lot of special operations military guys, but then also just because of my own interests, we'll have not just you, but we'll have someone like Don Dockin on and someone like Ed Dope on. And uh, just as a fan of music, I, it's it's an honor because it's like if I'm gonna do a podcast, I like to bring my own uh, interest into there. So yeah, if, if my my shameless Gene Simmons plug is. Uh, battle line podcast youtube everywhere you find podcasts and uh it is more military centric but for fans of this show you will find stuff like our don doc and interview and plenty of other stuff that appeals to you guys yeah i'm, I'm a big fan so Thank hey you. if you're if you're following me and and you're interested in the military go check it out uh awesome stuff and chris peranto you know with his military experiences just a fantastic story so okay now that we've promoted that since we are talking about guns and roses and i've decided that i'm going to be sharing shit that i frame in my house this is an, an original billboard magazine ad for when appetite for destruction went gold so you know now it's at like 19 or 20 million copies so right Jeez. at the beginning of gnr hitting so anyway uh it's from 1988 so kind of cool shit so for those oh, yeah. Guns N' Roses fans, there's something for you. So, with that, I I just saw in in uh I follow Ultimate Classic Rock. I don't know if you if you follow that page, but 
they share a lot you know it's it's kind of a cool magazine classic rock magazine but they just shared an article saying that guns and roses in the process of considering putting out a new album so i check check on this article and the first line says slash is saying that yeah hey they're 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 talking about putting out a new album and yes he is working on it well i hope he's working on it if it's a guns and roses uh album so what have you heard what are your thoughts on on this potential album coming out yeah we've been hearing about this forever of course since the reunion and the only thing that we've gotten are is it three tracks or four tracks that are reworks is it three or four here's what i have is hard school perhaps the general and absurd four tracks Yep, you're, you're okay so four tracks that are reworks of stuff from the chinese democracy era it's not stuff that these guys created in a studio together and i it's weird on one hand it's like yes i am dying to hear new guns and roses material from although it's not the classic lineup from yeah. slash duff and axel on the other hand it's like i i don't want this material to be terrible because right. it will be a huge letdown. The stuff that I've heard so far, it, it's all right. I'm not, I, I do like the song perhaps, I would say, but but truthfully, I'm not blown away by any of it. And if they put out just a half-ass album where if they're not, they, we don't know how they get along really. If, if it's stuff that they're sending to each other via email and they're not really doing this in the studio together and it's it's not really a band. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I've I have very mixed feelings on this. Um, I, I'm, I'm right with you. So today, because I knew we were talking about this, I went out and, and, and I've heard all those tracks, but I'm like, okay, I'm going to sit and listen to them. And just so I can kind of give, and, and there's, there's, you mentioned perhaps it, it's not bad. It sounds I think it's the like, best, the best of the four. Right. It's, it's to me, it sounds like a use your illusion outtake. I'm sure it's from the Chinese democracy sessions, but it resembles because it's really piano driven. It resembles some stuff from Use Your Illusion. Hard School to me is is the one song that sounds like, y- y- you know, maybe a relation to something that could have come off Appetite for Destruction. Just that it's got a really, you know, hard gu- guitar riff that sounds like something Slash would have came up with back in the day. And then there's The General, which I listened to that and I'm like, what the? I, I listened to it once yeah that one and i go I, I never need to hear this again yeah and and then there's absurd which is which is well it's absurd because it's almost <laughs> industrial uh i wasn't impressed so right if you're gonna come out with a new album don't i mean don't don't damage your legacy you know and i i just so i just put out a, a video uh about my my reaction to motley Crue's dogs of war and and my reaction and and apparently many thousands of other people are just like what what is this see i think i told you i i do like it i i like it the problem also is though and i I was at that bowery ballroom show which i don't know if i told you a week ago and what what they're able to do on pro tools and in the studio Vince Neil is not able to replicate live. So whether you like this song or not, he is not able to perform what you're hearing. And that's also the same problem with Guns N' Roses is that they may be able to make something that's going to sound incredible. But if you're being honest with yourself, I know there's people who will say that anything Axel does is amazing and he could do no wrong. I'm always going to give you my honest opinion. That's not my feeling from the last time I saw Guns N' Roses. And yeah, I, I that's what I worry about. The voice is not where it was even five years ago. No. So, I well, I I saw GNR last year, yeah, in twenty three, at the Fargo Dome, and and I was here, here's when you look at Appetite for Destruction, and you got these five young hungry guys, and now you see Guns and Roses on tour, and it's a big bloated mess. I mean, there's not only a drummer, but like a Congo, Congo, whatever you call it, fucking, you know, beating on the on the drums player. There's multiple keyboard players. They have this going on and that going on. And and I come from the school of two guitars, bass and drums and a singer. And 
So, you know, to me, the problem with Chinese democracy was that they took so long and it became so bloated with extra this and extra that, that if they just said, all right, look, let's put away all that shit. Now, hey, when you tour, yes, you're going to need a keyboard player. You know, you're going to need some help maybe to recruit, maybe even help on some of the vocals. But on the album, get Slash and whoever the fuck is playing guitar. Get, you know, you have two guitars, bass and drums, and just make a real, honest, raw rock and roll record. No, you don't have to go out and try to recreate Appetite for Destruction. But I've I've reviewed two songs in the past week, a Motley Crue song and a Sebastian Bach song. And the Sebastian Bach song, you know, to me sounds like it's not rehashed 80s stuff, but it doesn't abandon his old sound either. And, and that's what I would like to see Guns N' Roses do. Don't abandon your, your fans are there because of appetite for destruction and use your illusion. They're not there because of Chinese democracy and hard school and perhaps. So that's, you know, get, give us something that will give the people of, who have been with you for years, you know, give us something to hope for, you know? So, so here's where I will absolutely disagree with you. And I've heard you, uh, you know, crap on Chinese democracy and in, in past yeah. videos, I watch all your stuff. I unapologetically love Chinese democracy. It is one of my favorite albums start okay. to finish, man. I like every single song on Chinese democracy. And it's also because I listen to so much different music that when people were expecting appetite for destruction, as you've said, they'd be sorely disappointed but I, th I think it's a great album yes is it more bloated is there more studio effects going on absolutely my issue would be that axel was still singing at a very high level on that album um and if you saw him on that tour he had on nights he had off nights but if you saw them during the chinese democracy era axel still sounded most nights really good yep. um and even on the first run of the reunion tour with slash i which i saw he sounded pretty good. Now we're at that slope where this is really not sounding great, man. Slash is still able to absolutely tear it up every night. The rest of the band is, is fantastic. Is it a little bit much? I agree with you on that. But uh, Axel just can't perform at the level that, that he did. And I'm sure there's no way that he doesn't listen back to past performances and think, yeah, this, this is not my best. And, and, um, yeah, I don't know what you could do in the studio is very different because I'll also say yeah. this. I know you're a Dokken fan. Dokken just put out an album that I actually really liked. And Don yeah. is able to and openly, you know, he's not trying to hit notes. He's singing in a range that's comfortable for him. But when you see Don Dokken live, it's just not it's not that great. Uh, I'm gonna put it that way. And I loved having him on, but he can't sing like he used to. And Axel is still trying to hit all these notes that he was able to. And he abused his voice for years and it, it's so I just don't want to see them put out something that's an embarrassment. I don't think Chinese democracy was an embarrassment. I really liked it. Sure. Uh, if they put out something with slash, the expectations are going to be really high. And if they don't hit that, it, it's, it's not going to be pretty. Well, you, and you met, you mentioned earlier, you know, we don't know how they get along, you know, they might not ever see each other except for when they go on stage. You know, I mean, there, there are very a possible bands, a lot of bands who work that way. They, there's been so many money battles and breakups and bad blood that they get back together, but they're not like hanging out outside, you know, of, of the show. They're like, OK, they're on separate buses or flying in separately and all that. So. With that, I wonder if if they are. Well, number one, I, I wrote I wrote this down. If, if they are putting out a new album, is it gonna include those four songs, or is it gonna be like, okay, we got Slash and Duff back in? Are they gonna try to come up with ten new songs? So that's you know something that we don't know the answer to. But with the songs that they record, you know, is Axel just gonna bring in his boys, his studio musicians? crank something out and call it guns and roses or is our slash and duff 
going to be in there and be part of the songwriting process and part of choosing the riffs who knows yeah and, and you bring up a good point because I, as far as i know uh, based on the stuff that i've read over the years i believe axel is still the sole owner of the yeah. guns and roses name oh. so he could put out whatever he wants yeah. and put it under that name and that is a bit of a problem because slash and duff and Izzy, you know, who's not there, that they are also the heart and soul of this band. So I don't want them putting out something that's an embarrassment to their legacy. Yeah. If they, I, I would love nothing more than for them to put out something incredible. But the longer and longer they wait, the more Axel's voice is going to deteriorate, which I right. guess you can make up for with all these studio effects and all that. But uh, yeah, I'm, I, I, I don't know what to expect based on these songs. I would hope it is them in a studio actually getting together as a band and working right. on raw material and having that hunger. Right. Right. And, you know, I mean, these guys have, well, you know, probably all of them, they've, they've had money and fame and yes, men since 1988. So they're, they're, they're so far removed from 1986 and and writing appetite for destruction so of course I, I don't expect appetite for destruction but i also think to expect a young hungry band who's going to be in there working for hours together and going we're going to make this awesome thing i just i i worry i really doubt that that will happen i hope i'm proven wrong i hope you know because i'm a huge shit i'm a huge guns and roses fan same here man i, I had i started a guns and roses podcast yeah <laughs> that, that's still that. that still is around without me yeah it's, if you look up appetite for distortion uh hosted by brando i started that with him but it's it's really taken off since i i left but i i and i still do come on occasionally he's a great guy if you guys want to check that stuff out but um yeah man i'm i'm as diehard guns and roses as it gets so i would love nothing more and there's a lot of 80s bands that are putting out stuff that is not great but then there's bands like LA Guns that I'm like, I'm blown away by some of the material they've done in recent right. years. I would love to hear them doing something at the level of these last few LA Guns albums where you right. could tell these guys are in a studio really working at it and putting out putting out great stuff. I, I've, I've really enjoyed these albums they've put out. I, yeah, I, I am really liking the new Sebastian Bach. The, oh, last, yeah. the last LA Guns was, was phenomenal. Um, so... You, and and you know that L.A. Guns and Sebastian Bach aren't working with the kind of budget that Guns N' Roses is going to have. But I, two guitars, bass, and drums, Axel, I'm telling you, that's start there. Maybe, you know, some keyboard, but don't horn it all up and fucking, you know, bring in bells and whistles that you don't need. So, um I, you, you know, when you look at their discography, it's, it's actually very minuscule. Yes. I mean, appetite, obviously, but lies is not, to me, that's not really a GNR album. You know, I mean, it's a GNR album. It had, you know, patience was a hit, but it was like an acoustic side and it was like just kind of leftovers stuff. Right. Then you get use your illusion, which to me, um, should have been one amazing album instead of two albums that had some great songs, but a lot of filler. I agree. About the spaghetti incident, which I'll be honest, I'm a punk rock guy. I fucking love the spaghetti incident, but I get a lot of people aren't into it. That's a covers album. And then you get nothing, you know, you get the odd song here. Oh my God, sympathy for the devil until Chinese democracy. And, and, you know, I'm not a fan, but Hey, I know there are a lot of people who like it. And obviously he put a lot of time and effort into it. So you get that, but now, you know, it's 2024. So how many albums really is that? Four? Four yeah, it, it really makes you realize how precious time is when you look at the Guns N' Roses timeline, because I, like I said, I watched these performances. I've watched Axel's voice just truthfully deteriorate. And you think to yourself, man, what if these guys just got together and laid the, and and dropped the whatever issues they had 10 years prior? I, I think the material would have been a lot stronger. They would the touring would have been better. Uh, and they wasted a lot of time. They yeah. did. 
Yeah. And, and, and I, that's what, that's what I, you get to a point like you're, you're, you're younger. I'm 51. So I, I don't, I'm not old, but you get to a point where you go like, Hey, how much longer can we really tour, you know, like Axel's voice and, and do it, you know, to a high level, not that much longer. I mean, I want Guns N' Roses to go, you know what? There is an end to the road coming. Let's put away all the bullshit from the past and let's do our best to come together and put out one final product, you know, and, and, you know, if it sells, it sells, but, but let's come together and really try to do this once to cement our legacy as one of the best rock bands that, that the country has ever seen. And and that's my, my hope. And could you imagine if they got Izzy and Steven involved? Oh, sure. That would be that would be awesome. Yes, if if they would just do. That. And I, it's weird because it has nothing to do with age necessarily. Because I I saw Aerosmith in 2019 prior to the pandemic, and I'll be seeing them on this final tour. Steven Tyler still has it. Oh, yeah. I'm not a huge Rolling Stones guy, but you look at these videos of them, and you go, these guys are fucking 80. They still somehow have it. And and some guys have been able to keep this thing going and other guys fall off the rails a little bit. And I think you got to be honest with yourself. When I go to see L.A. Guns or Sebastian Bach or I, I go at the end of those shows, I go, wow, man, they're still performing at such a high level. I, I will go see them anytime they're around here. And the last time I saw Guns N' Roses, I go, ah, this is just not like I said, Slash still killing it. Sure. But. I, I agree with you. I watch that and I go, I feel like they just need to do one final tour and, and whatever they need to do to get Steven involved, get Izzy involved. Uh, that that would really please the fans and and leave on a high note. And, and I'll just, one more on Axel Live. I thought he was phenomenal when he fronted ACDC. I mean, if you've seen some of the- Yes, concert, yeah, yeah. It was unreal. But when I that saw- That seemed him, to be I, the very end of him having this great right. voice. Whatever he did, he was great. When, when I saw him last year, there was a lot of, ooh, yikes. Okay, so, yeah. Okay, hey, tell us in the comments, what do you think about a new GNR album coming out? Are you excited? Do, do you think it's going to be a shit show? Or, or what do you think about it? We'd be interested in hearing about that. Ian Scotto. Thanks for thanks for being on to talk about the potential of a new Guns N' Roses album, brother. Oh, anytime, man. I, I love doing this. Okay. Hey, uh, leave a comment. I would love it if you like and subscribe, all that shit that everyone tells you to do. Until the next video comes out, my name is Anthony. They call me the guru. Take care.